Hi! Before we get too much into the video, I just want to say this video does contain spoilers for the anime Neon Genesis Evangelion and also spoilers for the End of Evangelion movie, but we do not talk about the rebuilds or anything outside of the 25 episode anime series and the two movies that came out shortly after to wrap up the anime series. So, if you haven't seen the rebuilds, no stress, I haven't either. I'm not spoiling those. Anyway, let's get into it. <laughs> It was the fall of 1995, and a new season of anime was just getting started on television. As usual, most of the titles airing that season were based off of other properties like manga and games, but there was one title that had since been set apart from the rest. Neon Genesis Evangelion was a new addition to the roster. Being an original work, the production of this anime was already a risk because there was no established audience for the franchise yet. However, Evangelion would go on to prove that it was more than capable of garnering a dedicated audience, and this series would go down in history as a classic and highly influential anime. This series gained so much popularity that there was enough licensed merchandise and promotional collaborations to live entirely off of Evangelion merch. But what was Evangelion, and just how much of an impact did it make on the anime industry? <laughs> Evangelion was an anime that followed 14-year-old Shinji Ikari. Set in the year of 2015, humanity was under attack by alien creatures called angels. In order to combat the angels, the organization Nerve created living robots, which were called Avas. They required a compatible pilot. The story started with Shinji arriving in Tokyo 3 to become the pilot for Unit 1 and followed his hesitant journey through battling angels and battling his own mental and emotional setbacks. The focus on mental health and identity in Evangelion is part of what set it apart from other television anime at the time. Avid fans of anime had noticed a difference in anime before and after Evangelion aired on television. Comparing shows that aired before and alongside Evangelion with shows that aired after, it became clear that television anime tackling more serious topics related to identity or mental health became more common after Evangelion aired. Similar things can be said specifically for the mecha genre, which, if you don't know, is a genre typically characterized by mechanical innovation, um, most iconically the, the giant robots. The genre itself started after World War II with titles like Astro Boy and Giganator, Evangelion tended to break the mold of the mecha genre. So many anime reference Evangelion now that its fresh take on the hero and psychology is kind of now an overdone trope. Good morning, Shinji. How's it going? Evangelion took a different and darker approach to the mecha genre and paved the way for more serious topics to be explored on television anime. I don't believe it! This can't be! To showcase the differences between Evangelion and typical mecha anime at the time, one should compare Evangelion to Mobile Suit Gundam, which was a widely popular series that has been re also regarded highly and credited for laying down a new standard of mecha anime in the 1980s. One of the biggest differences was the way the giant robots were portrayed. In Evangelion, the EVA units were almost something to be feared. Taking a look at the anime's theme song and visuals, the first time a robot even appears, it's bathed in shadow and after a handful of cuts to other characters, the robot is back and it's like writhing. This is then followed by a few quick cuts of close-up details like the robot's crumbling mechanical teeth, its hands dripping with blood, and the robot with blood streaming down its leg and foot, standing in what appeared to be a puddle of blood. The designs of Eva's are also not the typical mecha robot. They were unnervingly skinny and monstrous. However, Mobile Suit Gundam's robots were large and blocky, and they looked strong. In the anime's theme song sequence, the first time a Gundam, which is the robot, is seen, it's in action, swinging a sword. The different pieces that made up the Gundam were also shown coming together and standing proud, ready to defend against whatever monsters came its way. Towards the end of the sequence, the robot is shown standing heroically looking up towards the sky as the sun shines down on it. The Gundam was shown as something to be celebrated, while the Eva is shown as something to be wary of. 
How can you do this to me? I thought you didn't want me! Another stark difference between Evangelion and Mobile Suit Gundam was the difference in how they treated the main hero. Mobile Suit Gundam's Amuro Rei was a typical hero. He was brave and grew into a leader over the course of the anime. Shinji Ikari, on the other hand, was timid and reluctant to fight, only stepping up to the plate due to the praise and his desire to please those around him. I mean, Shinji even spends a good chunk of the End of Evangelion movie in the fetal position, refusing to step up and fight and protect himself until the very end. But you know what? We don't talk about them. <laughs> we don't talk about that movie. As your resident Misato stan for the rest of my life, love that woman. That movie didn't happen. Slash J. <laughs> Kashi, my love. I did do the right thing, didn't I? This was a huge difference in the heroes who were unafraid to fight that could be found in most other mecha series. Although both Amuro and Shinji were placed in extremely distressing situations, Evangelion's approach to portraying the emotional trauma was much more bleak, and instead of having Shinji grow past his weaknesses, the anime only showcased his weaknesses and dwelled on them for the entirety of the story. What is it that you wish for? What is it that you want? You're very insecure, aren't you? To become secure, I have to have... value! I want to be worth something! Evangelion was not afraid to spend ample time, whole episodes even, exploring the characters' emotions and dissecting their relationships. And this subverted the expectations of any other mecha show before. One infamous scene that gets referenced a lot in these types of video essays feature both Asuka and Rei, the two female leads. Both of these characters had a rocky relationship, and one scene in particular set out to lay out the tension between these two characters by subjecting the audience to over a minute of complete silence as they rode the elevator together. Evangelion also opted to go for an apocalyptic and tragic ending where all but two of the characters yeah, not even main cast, two of the characters who just so happened to be in the main cast. Um, everyone but these two died. And some could interpret that the world also ended. Uh, it's a little unclear. However, a typical mecha featured a more victorious ending, where the good guys won and the day was saved. The world was not going to perish. Unlike in Evangelion. In an interview at an anime convention, Kazuya Tsurimaki, an animator for Evangelion, discussed certain story decisions that were made for the series. He stated, We wanted to broaden the genre and show people an ugly, unhappy ending. This decision to create a story with an abysmal ending was one that was made with the intention of doing something different, and Evangelion sure did that. The series overall tended to take on a more pessimistic tone, um, whereas typical mecha had a much more optimistic outlook on the characters, what they were capable of, and how things should end up. Evangelion tended to focus on the main cast's mental health, so much so that by the end of the television series, the main storyline was traded for a more abstract character study. Everything is simply a shape, a form, an identifier to let others recognize me as me! But then, what am I? Is this me? My true self? My fake self? What is it that I am? Who are you? There is little difference between how you interpret yourself and how the others interpret you. With the final episodes being completely abstract as the audience followed Shinji's thought process as he struggles to accept his role in and pondered the Human Instrumentality Project, the forced evolution of humanity by uniting all human souls. The topic of mental health and the somewhat grim and apathetic approach that Evangelion took was nothing new. However, this type of content wasn't as common and it wasn't really on television, at least as far as anime was concerned. The years following Evangelion's release saw an increase in dark psychological dramas aimed at more mature audiences. Fans and industry sources alike considered Serial Experiments Lane as one of these darker anime that was able to exist due to Evangelion. 
Serial Experiments Lane was a television anime from 1998 that focused on identity within The Wired, which was the show's version of what we know as the internet and social media as it stands today. Evangelion and Serial Experiments Lane both covered themes of identity and interpersonal relationships within the context of technology. Both Shinji and Lane are desperately concerned about the fact that their subjectivity is verging on terminal identity due to their dependence on the machine. Concepts like these were not typically explored on the more family-friendly anime that were airing on television at the time. But after Evangelion, anime had the opportunity to discuss in-depth more abstract and complicated issues with an older audience. After Evangelion saw a successful run on television, networks could not deny that there was, in fact, a sizable audience for mature content. Television networks sectioned off more time for anime geared towards adult audiences and expanded the already existing late-night slots. When looking at an archive of anime series airing over the course of the 1990s, the vast majority of the new series were children's shows until Evangelion aired, after which things started to change, albeit slowly at first. Evangelion opened the proverbial floodgates of anime geared towards older audiences that now saturate the market today. Ready to push? Go! Shinji, you're pretty useful. Evangelion has also been cited as a factor in growing a worldwide audience for Japanese anime. During an interview, an executive from TV Tokyo, Kisuke Iwata, discussed how the anime industry had been able to survive for as long as it had. Iwata stated, Evangelion expanded the global marketplace's willingness to accept animation that is distinctly Japanese in one broad stroke. It's also worth noting that most anime that had seen a global audience were stories that were a little bit more universal and without borders due to things like being set in other countries outside of Japan or just like fantasy things. Despite being set in a distinctly Japanese setting, Evangelion was still highly regarded worldwide. Before Netflix acquired the rights to stream the series and released it to the public in 2019, there was no like actual legal way to watch Evangelion without spending hundreds of dollars on the DVDs and VHS or being lucky enough to have been around to buy these things as they were coming out way back when. But despite this being virtually inaccessible, unless you are ready to yo-ho your way through anime, <laughs> it was still highly recommended and ex almost, maybe not expected, but highly encouraged to watch due to its you know, status as being one of those classic animes that anyone who can stomach it should definitely watch. And I do agree with that statement. It is one of my favorite animes. If you have not seen it, first of all, thank you for making it this far in a video on an anime that you have not seen. And also, you should give it a give it a shot. It's pretty good. I enjoyed it. <laughs> Commencing operation. Listen, Shinji, we're entrusting you with the energy of the entire nation of Japan. Neon Genesis Evangelion was a revolutionary anime. Not only had it been a key player in the global spread of anime and Japanese culture, but the series also brought some new life into the anime industry in Japan and could be credited with reinventing the mecha genre. Comparing Shinji Ikari with Amuro Rei, it was easy to see that Evangelion did not follow the typical child-turned-strong and courageous hero pattern that had already been established. Also taking into consideration that Gundams were a symbol of strength and power, while Avas were regarded as monsters, it was clear to see that Evangelion would not be the typical mecha anime. Evangelion's decision to tackle topics such as depression, nihilism, and existential dread paved the way for other anime to cover similar topics. It also proved to the anime industry that there was an audience for not only original works, but also more mature content for television anime. This revelation allowed for television channels to expand the time slots set aside for more mature content. Neon Genesis Evangelion was instrumental in shaping the anime industry as we know it today. And that's how Evangelion impacted the anime industry, how it changed the industry. Congratulations! Congratulations!
Congratulations. 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 Oh, thank you all.